Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. So here it is, one of the most requested things as of late, the scrolling thumbnail gallery. Not just the thumbnails, the gallery to go with the thumbnails. So if you've created the thumbnails, you probably have something that looks sort of like what I have happening here, less the green square. Um, so let's check it out. Here's the finished gallery actually, and you can see I click on one, fades in, click on another one, fades in, fades in, fades in, fades in. Okay, so very, very cool. We got all this stuff working. What's the green square? Well, the green square is just something I threw together real quick. Because of the way we're building this file, we're going to kind of build it in a little bit of a unique way, using some variables and things like that to sort of take from just being a beginner's gallery to more of an intermediate kind of thing. And uh, don't be scared, because we're going to go through everything just like we do in all the rest of them. We're going to figure it all out. It's all going to be fine and dandy in the end. But, <clears throat> but, excuse me, what this allows us to do is... Um, create this button and this button when I click it it just picks a random photo and displays that you can see that we're getting random photos every time I click it I can click 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 all through and every time a different photo comes up or right down here you know it's the photo you click shows up but that's just a random photo button we're just throwing together just just for the heck of it so here we are this is the scrolling thumbnail gallery without anything working See, I can click as many times as I want. Nothing's happening. So we need to do a little bit of work here. And uh, just as a quick refresher, we are using ActionScript 2.0. So if you're using Flash 6 or newer, you should be fine. And please forgive me for any stupid little mistakes I make because I'm already completely zoned into ActionScript 3.0. And uh, I may start typing out functions or something like that as if I'm in ActionScript 3.0. But ActionScript 2.0 it is. So let's get going. The first thing I want to uh, do is mask off these thumbnails. Why do I want to do that? Well, let me just show you real quick. Hit Control Enter and uh, make this window a little bit bigger. You can see that these thumbnails are just rolling right off the edge of the screen. They're not constrained, and it looks like the photo gallery is as wide as the screen. But you can see there, it's not. So let's close it. Let's create a quick mask. Create. Well, select layer one. Create a new layer. Double click on it. Name it Mask and grab the rectangle tool, set the stroke to none size of the rectangle should be 600 by whoops, by 400 X and Y are both zero and just right click on that layer and hit mask now I'm gonna save it and it's gonna tell me that I'm converting it from flash 8 format to flash CS3 I'm just gonna say save I don't have to worry, worry about that right now I'm gonna export the movie and now I'm going to uh, make it a bit bigger and you can see that it's masked off so we can really see the edges of our gallery close that okay so we just masked our thumbnails now let's uh, create a new layer and name it photos create a new layer photos okay now comes the fun part let's open up the library double click to open up our JPEG folder and we want to create two new folders inside of it one called thumbs. I know it created it outside of it, don't worry about that. And one called IMGs. So we're gonna grab the thumbs folder, drag it up, drop it in JPEG. Whoops, I don't know if that actually happened. Drag the images into there. Gonna close up the color panel. It's taking up a whole lot of space. And thumbs. Okay, they're both here inside of the JPEG folder. Let's grab one through ten and drop them into the thumbs folder. I'm just doing this just for organization because I'm about to bring in ten images. Okay, now we can actually import these in several different ways. We can just import them right here from Bridge. Select one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten images. Drag and drop them into the images folder. And all should be well. It's just loading them in because it's ten images. And it doesn't actually drop them into the images folder, but it does import them and just sticks them in our library for us. So we're going to grab all ten of them drag them to the images folder and double click on images and voila there we are great that's awesome okay now we have our photos in the library we have a photos layer what do we need to do next next up we need to uh, create the symbol that's going to hold all of our photos so let's grab the rectangle tool again I'm going to use bright green so it's easy for you guys to see draw out a square select it I'm going to set the width to about 600, I guess, and the height to, let's try 400. And uh, let's set the X to 20, and the Y, oops, the X cannot be 20. 
it's set to zero. Okay, and we are 600 wide, so I really want that to be... Well, no, 600 wide is good, and um, I want the Y to be zero as well. And I'm just going to hit F8 to convert this to a symbol. We're going to convert it to a movie clip symbol, and we're going to name this guy MC for movie clip photos. And the registration point we're setting at the center because that is what we are going to um, align our photos with. Hit OK. And now double click into there. And we want to create a couple new layers. Uh, well, actually, one new layer. We're going to name this bottom layer photos. And the top layer, AS for action script. And we want to drag out 100 layers. So I'm just going to select the 100th layer here or frame, excuse me, layer, frame, and hit F5 to drag out frames. So now we've got frames between 1 and 100. Perfect. I'm going to select this green box and just delete it now. Now what I want to do is, well, actually, I want to set a keyframe at each frame that is multiply, mul each frame that is a multiple of 10. That's what I meant to say. Each frame that is a multiple of 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, and 60. By the way, if you're not sure you're right on frame 60, you can look right down here. It tells you what the current frame is. 70. So there I'm on 81. 80 is what you want. 90. And last but not least, 100. So we have keyframes on 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. It's perfect, exactly what we need. Next thing we need to do is drag down here and just hit F5, or F, yeah, F5, and then hit F6 to convert those two new frames to uh, keyframes. See, so now we actually have 101 frames. 101. And we are going to start right here. And what we want to do is drag out a photo and place one on each of these keyframes. So we want to keep, um, keep a lookout and see what the first photo is. In this case, image one is this droplet on the leaf because that's just, we're going to kind of, you know, keep it a mental note of what's going on. So we're going to drop this guy in here. And uh, we'll move them up a little bit. All right, we're just going to roughly position them in there. We don't have to worry about being too exactly perfect. Second is the tropical sunset. Again, just kind of rough it in. You can use the align palette to align it perfectly if you so wish, but because of time constraints, we are going to kind of push through this one kind of quickly. The hotel. And next would be the chess. And next would be the arrow sign. After that is the bacon and crab. And after that I forget because I cannot see my little time or my little thumbs. So I am going to simply move it over. Okay, so we've got the beer, the biker, the boat, and the building. That'll be easy. Okay, next is the beer, glass. And uh, then the biker. And then the boats. And finally, the building. Just like that. And we ought to have 10 images in there. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so it looks like we're good. Uh, my count was correct there. And now we have all of our images in here. So you can see we go from one to the next, 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 and on and on and on. All right, that's great. I'm gonna save my document. What we need to do now is on each of these keyframes that is above a photo, we need to place a frame label. So for this one, we're going to say IMG1. We need to place a keyframe above this guy. Name him. IMG2. Above this guy. Place one. F6 places one there. Having a little bit of trouble. IMG3. Make sure you're spelling these correctly, by the way, because we're going to be 
referencing them via action script in just a little bit so it's kind of vital that you get them right Oops. I go again forgetting to put the keyframe image 6 F6 image 7 let's move this guy over Image 8, Image 9, Image 10. All right, so that looks pretty good. We got all of our images. Now we can reference via action script. We can just jump right to the image. Okay, save it. We actually also need to put a stop action in right up here. So I'm going to hit F9 to bring up the actions panel which as you can see is quite large. We're gonna place a stop action up there. Just like that. See, now I'm in action. Get rid of the actions panel and I'm just going to double click to move back out. I'm gonna save my document and we're gonna hit command, return or control enter to uh, take a look at the movie. And you can see our line of thumbnails works like it's supposed to and no images are showing up, That's that's perfect. Now what we need to do is get inside of our thumbnails. So I need to unlock my thumbnails layer. I'm going to convert my mask layer just to be outline mode for now. So now I'm going to double click on my thumbnails. I'm going to double click on any, just double click on them. It's this, just a bunch of the same instances. So anything you do inside of this is going to be done inside of the rest. Now in here we need to give each of these buttons uh, an instance name. So let's give them an instance name of, well, let's say BTN1. And this guy, BTN2. This guy, BTN3. Oh, wrong one. There we go. BTN3. BTN4. BTN5. BTN6. Seven, and it goes on and on and on. Hey, that's the tenth. I messed up somewhere. BTN eight, oh, this one. Nine, and this guy's BTN ten. So there we go. We've got all of these ready to be referenced by Action Script. So what we need to do is create a new layer called AS for Action Script. Select that keyframe and open up the Actions panel. All right, here comes the variable. We're going to define a variable var. We're going to name this variable frame num and then put a colon and write number with a capital N. Whoops. Number with a capital N, space equals space. Oh, uh, actually, no, it doesn't equal anything. We're just going to define that frame num is a variable of the number data type. We're going to get a couple lines here and we're going to type up a, um, a function. So we're going to say, well, actually, before we do this, we need to go back. Just gonna double click to get back, back, and now this photos. I'm gonna select the photos layer. I want to click that very center point. Okay, didn't quite select at that time. I'm gonna try again. There we go. I've selected the instance of MC photos. We want to call this something like, well, let's just give it a simple name. Photos. That's the reference name. So let's get back inside of these thumbs now. And on the action script layer, we're gonna write up a function real quick. We're just gonna say function, and we're gonna give this function a name. We're gonna call it photo change, not exchange, change. Open and close parenthesis, open curly bracket, enter return twice, close curly bracket up arrow key. And here we're gonna say underscore root, so go back to the root timeline, then dive into the photos movie clip. And then from there, I want you to go to and stop. And here's where it gets tricky. We're just gonna put parentheses here for now because it, you might get totally confused if I start doing that before I set up this next part. Here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say btn one dot on release space equals space function open and close parentheses, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, enter return twice, up arrow key, like I just did. Okay, here, now we're going to set a value to this frame number variable that we defined. So we're gonna say, on release, we want frame num to equal one. And we also want you to execute the function photo change. So when this button is released, it's going to say, hey, frame num, you, you don't equal anything right now, come equal one. And 
whatever function photo changes, just play, basically play this function. So it will go to and stop, and now we need to set what is it gonna go to and stop on. So here's where we do open and close parentheses, and inside that we say IMG, because we remember we set all those frame labels that say IMG1, IMG2, IMG3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, plus that variable, frame num. So this will go to IMG1 if BTN1 gets pressed. Now we're just gonna copy this whole bit of code, paste it here, and we're gonna say BTN2.onRelease, and we're just gonna change frame num to equal two there. So if BTN1 is pressed, frame num is gonna equal two. So instead of writing out this bit of code for every single line here, we're just telling, just simply go execute that function. All right, I'm gonna duplicate this code for all 10 of the buttons and I'll be back in a split second. Okay, mine are all done. And you can see that every time a button is pressed, frame num is going to equal whatever number th that, that frame label is. Let me just uh, quick give you a visual here. Let's go back. And we'll hop over into photos, depending on how much of a pain in the neck it is to click. There we go. You see we got IMG1, IMG2, IMG3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So every time that happens, it's going to go to and play that. Let's just uh, save it and check to see what we've got here. I'll start playing through this and uh, let's select the bacon grab. Hey, check it out, it works. Look at that. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So there you go, you just set up that variable, and now because we've set up that variable, well, we can do a couple things. We can quickly make that randomizing button. We can also actually create a fade. Let's do that, let's create the fade. That's probably more important because you saw probably in my original here, I had this nice little fade happening every time you clicked an image. And that fade, well, it's pretty easy to do. So let's do it. To do that, we have to get back inside of that photos clip and create a new layer underneath the action script layer and we're just gonna call it Vader. Here we are going to, um, we're gonna drag out a rectangle, the same color as the background color. So that I actually happen to know is the second darkest gray we have here in flash. Get rid of the stroke and I'm just gonna make it as big as this area of uh, as our area where we could have a photo. Alrighty, I'm gonna select it here, hit F8 to convert it to a symbol, and we're gonna name it MC Fader, McFader. Hit OK. Double click to get inside of McFader and convert that to a symbol. And this we're gonna call MC Fader Inner. Hit OK. And uh, what we wanna do in here is just drag out 10 frames. So I'm just gonna Alt, drag out 10 frames, actually 11, because what I want to do is start this on frame two. And we want to select this box that's on frame 11 and reduce the alpha to zero. And right click in between them and create a motion tween. Looks like we did nothing, but there actually is a box going from 100% opacity to 0% opacity. Create a new layer, name it AS. On the very first keyframe, bring up the actions panel. We're just gonna pop a stop action in there just to keep it from repeating over and over and over and over and over again. And we're gonna save our file and we're gonna double click to get back out. And we're gonna name this movie clip, see instance of McFader. We're going to give this an instance name of Fader. And uh, there we go, save it. And now we gotta go back, back, back out here. Double click into our thumbs, double click into them again. Grab the action script file. And here in this function, we just need to add something to this function. We just need to go down. And when you say underscore root, whoops, root dot photos dot fader dot go to and stop, or whoops, go to and play. I mean, looking at what I'm typing and thinking, that's not right. Go to and play frame two, because remember frame one stopped, we started the animation on frame two. So now every time this gets processed, this fade should happen. Let's save it. Commander, Control, Enter, and uh, let's check it out. Hey, look at that. It fades. That's make fader at work. Okay, now that's that's all you need to know. If you want to stick around for the next five, maybe ten minutes, and we'll make that random button, feel free. We're gonna do it right now. A little bit of rounding numbers, generating random numbers. Okay. 
This one will be pretty simple. We'll just go back scene one and create a new layer. Call it BTN. And I'm just going to draw another small green button. Button can be any color you want. You can you can even style it more than this. But we're just going to select it and uh, hit F9. Whoop, not F9, F8. And convert it to a button. So we're going to say BTN random. Hit OK. And we're going to give this an instance name of random underscore BTN. And in the action script panel, hit F9 to bring that up. Remember all this stuff. Let's hit enter return a few times to just make that disappear. We don't want to be looking at that. Now what we're going to say is random underscore BTN dot on release space equals space function open and close parenthesis open curly bracket enter return twice close curly bracket up arrow key. Now here's what we're going to say. We are going to uh, create a new variable. We're going to say var pick num and this is a number. Put a semicolon at the end. Go to the next line. Here we're going to say pick num space equals space math dot seal. Oops, I spelled seal wrong. Math dot seal. And now math dot seal is basically the same as math dot round or math dot floor. The difference between the three is math dot round simply rounds the number. Math dot floor rounds the number down to the lowest number. Math dot seal. Keep spelling it wrong. Math.seal rounds the number up. You think floor, ceiling, floor, seal. Okay? And here inside of the, so we're rounding this number. So now we have to generate the number. We're going to say math.random, uh, open close parenthesis, times 10, close parenthesis, semicolon. So pick num is now going to equal this random number. The reason we're rounding up is because math.random can grab like a zero and we want it to just automatically round it up to one if it does that. And now what we want to do is you know tell us to play but before we do this we just want to trace this. We're gonna trace pick num and we'll just see what the the uh, the output panel comes up with. Hit F9 and let's just publish the movie. Okay here's the output panel. Alright I've got a one and I just made the output panel go into there. Take that guy out of there. Alrighty, so I've got a 1, I've got a 6, I've got a 9, I've got a 9, 8, 10, 4, good. I don't see anything above 10, I don't see anything less than 1. It's exactly what we want. Go back to the AS. Now we can get rid of this trace statement. Our testing is done. Now it is time to say photos. We don't have to go back to root because we're already on the root. Photos.go to and stop. IMG. Whoops. IMG, because that's actually the literal string, plus pick num. That's that random number we just generated. Now we've got a little bit of experience doing that because we just use that to basically select the, whatever image we're going to select anyway. And then photos dot fader dot go to and play to. And there we go. This button should now choose a random number. And then use that number to choose a picture. Let's save it. Let's publish the movie and see what happens. When I click it, hey, there's the boat's image. There's the first image. There's the fifth image. And there's the second image. And on and on and on. And that is how you do it. So there you go. Wow. Quite a bit we got done there. It took a little bit of time. But hey, there you go. You now know how to make your gallery. You also have the bonus of the little random button and a little bit of math and rounding in the process. So I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly hope you learned something. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out tutvid.com. See you later.